here's why I think they'll come for the pill. They're already, they're already going to come for the IUD because the capacity for even the supposed like most most compassionate and reformed you know and, and the most like sort of least extreme republicans their capacity to justify any of these things is enormous because of course they have created these fundamentalist monsters and and i remind you the history of republicans and the uh fundamentalist right adopting the issue of abortion really was a surrogate for their anger at being forced to segregate or integrate i should say it came out of uh, bob jones university being uh having their tax status threatened because they wouldn't allow black uh and white students to date so just know, like, you know, like their their capacity to justify all of this is infinite. I give you Governor Asa Hutchinson, who is just beside himself with how hard it's going to be for victims of rape. Governor, I, I want to go back to my question about those women. What would you say to those women who seek an abortion, who don't have the money to travel, who don't have the money to raise a child, what would you say to them? Well, first of all, again, that's where uh, your heart goes out to them. I've had to deal with those very difficult circumstances of, of rape and incest as a uh, governor, and uh, it's difficult. And so you have to understand that. You have to provide services, and I believe that uh, we want to increase the services for maternal health, to increase the uh, services for adoption services as well. And so we want to invest in those areas that will help those uh, women with very difficult... Uh, uh, adoption services. So does Asa Hutchinson approve uh, gay couples seeking those children immediately? Immediately. Immediately. Right. If you're going to force women to have children, any couple that's loving in a relationship should be able to adopt a child. Right. Is that the case? Oh, my God. I would say everything he is suggesting as to what they're going to provide for services. They're not going no. to provide for services, period. It's Thank just you a for lie. your thoughts and prayers for the Here. victims of rape and incest. Continue on with this. How much more is there? circumstances of the pregnancy uh, but secondly i think to your point uh, the rape and incest uh, exceptions will continue to be a part of the debate uh, right now oh. uh, we do not have rape and incest as exceptions under the arkansas trigger law but there's uh, i think that will be a part of the debate would you I've like to see those exceptions those exceptions are important Yes, I expressed whenever I signed the law that I would prefer <laughs> the rape and incest exceptions to be in there. And even though we have the trigger but I signed law, it I anyway. expect those exceptions yep. to be a significant part of the debate <coughs> in the, the future, debate. even though uh, we're going to immediately go to restrict abortions uh, in the exceptions with the exception of the life of the mother in danger. Why do you? You know what? I do away with the rape and incest incest uh, exception. Honestly, I, I don't even want to concede that to them because when you make an exception for rape or incest, you s continue to stigmatize abortion. It's only acceptable in this case of extreme brutality. And so every other woman that's seeking it outside of these narrow sets of horrible circumstances is immoral so it just feeds into the framing stop asking about exceptions for rape and incest they're not interested in it he's gonna say on cable i wish in theory but i still signed the bill anyway that they'd have these exceptions it's impossible to enforce all it's there to do is to make women who seek abortions seem like immoral uh women who are are, are sexually promiscuous basically I, I, I don't even want to have entertain the conversation anymore. Yeah. I understand why liberals want to do it because it highlights their brutality, but it is a wrong, it's the wrong path to go down. Um, and also in practice, let's be clear of what happens in practice in this instance, right? Like, like you need to prove that you've been raped. Yeah. Like you, you need to prove to, like, it doesn't happen. Where's the rapist? Yeah. yeah our great where's justice the, system. Where's the justice yeah. system? Like, you know, like, a, 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 like a, how many months is it going to take? Until the rape is proved. This is, I mean, like, like Emma's saying, this is BS. It's not even real. Yeah. It's not even real.
this the the exception for rape or incest how long do you have to prove it incest like like okay i'm a uh a 15 year old uh, girl who has been impregnated by my uncle or my father and so i am going to announce this because unlike every other instance of of incest that takes place i happen to be you know uh, have the emotional support to come out and announce that I have been raped by a family member and also have the emotional support to go and announce this publicly so that I can prove to the um, to the uh, what to the court that I have been uh, sexually uh, uh, that I have been raped by um, a family member. And of course, I've got to do this all rather quickly um, because um, there's a clock on this and and the idea that like will also offer you know rape victims it's not just a question of like we're we're going much further than just sympathy we're going to tell you there's a debate yeah yeah so just we should, we should that. know that uh we we've sent you a debate it's along with the muffin basket that we send you with every forced pregnancy and our heart that went out to you and our heart has gone out to you. i feel his heart i feel his heart we should talk about the uh since he mentioned abortion the amy coney barrettness of this all uh <laughs> just from the opinion uh noted uh, a woman who puts her newborn up for adoption today has little reason to fear that the baby will not find a suitable home. Uh, tucked into a footnote for that statement was a telling citation from a 2008 CDC report that found nearly one million women were seeking to adopt children in 2002, uh, uh, i.e. they were in demand for a child, whereas the domestic supply of infants relinquished at birth or within the first month of life and available to the to be adopted had become virtually non-existent. And apparently like that's uh, consistent with uh uh judgments passed by coney barrett before and it's i mean that i think that to, i was talking to people like that really freaks people out i i think that should be emphasized a little bit more that part of this is like they're trying to make people have carry their uh pregnancies to term so they can give them up for adoption oh yeah. oh oh there's you know um i read a great thread on this uh and, I, and i'll talk about this later but we have seen examples in this country of, of immigrant children during the Trump administration stolen from their parents and given to basically religious fundamentalists. I mean, this is, I know it's hyperbole. And I know there's a lot of criticism to like be using Handmaid's Tale uh, references, but not every piece of fiction is necessarily exactly the way it plays out in reality. But I got news for you. The structure of this is going to be very, very similar. When they pass that ban, which is only contingent upon them having the same majority that Democrats had when they passed the ACA for two years. Democrats get that majority. They pass a necessary but insufficient health care reform bill. When Republicans get that, that type of majority, they will pass a federal ban on abortion. I don't know if they'll stop there. They will pass a federal ban on abortion. And any exception for the life of the mother or the uh, or rape, understand what that means in practice. For rape, it means that a rape victim needs to prove that they've been raped. They need to go through this entire process before they get their you know permission slip to end the pregnancy. And let's also be clear on what constitutes the health of the mother. You heard uh tate reeves is that his name from um yeah. from mississippi say oh we're gonna pass this ban we're not gonna lock up any um uh doctors because they're gonna know not to perform an abortion because we did it okay so you're a doctor and you know that the law says you go to jail if you perform an abortion except of course in the con uh, context of rape well, you got to wait for your permission slip from the court system and, the, and all the legal proceedings that would exist uh, to prove that a woman's been raped.
what decision do you make about the life of the mother? This is not, there's no, there's no, you know, uh, a siren that goes off on people's heads where they're like, my life is in jeopardy. It is a subjective medical call made by a doctor. And now that decision-making process is the doctor looking at these different elements. Okay. In 20% of these, let's say, assume for the moment, the doctor has an encyclopedic computerized brain. 20% of these situations, the mother dies. Is that sufficient? 30%, 40%, 50%, 8%, 2%. Where's the cutoff? Now, of course, the doctor has to make this subjective determination. On one hand, now it is, we need to terminate this pregnancy. And I'm weighing your life, which I think there's a 20% chance, 8% chance, 40% chance, 60% chance that you will die if we do not terminate this pregnancy against this uh, life of the fetus. And my fear that I'll be targeted. Well, now, that's the way it is today. But in there, in, in a matter of months, yeah. that doctor, if, if, if women are given the opportunity to have an abortion if it means their life. That doctor now has to add one more element into that. Do I want to go to jail for a year or two or three or 10 or whatever? And to think that that's not going to weigh in their decision-making process. I mean, people, this has all been so theoretical and hypothetical that people have really not worked through the way this is going to work out. It's going to be no one in this country really has a sense, I think, of what this is going to really be like. And, and I will tell you, abortion was not a constitutional right prior to 1973. This time around, it is going to be far, these bans are going to be far more onerous because there is a massive political incentive for these right wingers to hold up, you know, basically um, scalps in this instance. It is going to be very, very uh, different. Dimash, if heart surgery was illegal, would doctors still do it? Some would. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Well, yeah, but with heart surgery, this is not. A a surgical abortion is one of the safest procedures right now, surgically, that you can get in the United States. So, you know, but and there's also if you get catch it early enough, there are pill options. So that's where I think a lot of this is going to go under the table. Women ordering pills off the Internet. Oh, yeah. I think there's going to be without a doubt, there's going to be black market, uh, black market set up and then maybe black markets for IUDs. I'm already yeah. starting to think about contingency plans and, uh, for 2024. And uh, yeah, what the important thing on that is uh, accept jury duty and uh, look up the t uh, uh, concept jury nullification and uh, yeah, vote to acquit any woman who is obviously uh, buying that sort of product through the mail.